how to use the uh, Rockwell testers. We have uh, three Rockwell testers here uh, in the laboratory. We have one electronic one, we have a manual Rockwell tester, and then uh, behind the camera we have a superficial Rockwell camera. Let me walk towards it briefly. This one for doing uh, what's called end testing. You know from your laboratory manual that uh, Rockwell created a series of tests, not just one, but a series depending upon whether you're using aluminum, soft steel, mild steel, hard steel. And let's see how these Rockwell testers can handle all those different tests because they're quite versatile machines. Let's start with the electronic one. It's the most fun and it's the easiest to use. Power is behind the machine. You can see, just see my fingers there. Just reach for the switch and turn on. And it'll take it a few moments to power up, so that's perfectly acceptable. Our mounts here for the, uh, the tips go inside, mount up here, and we have the various tips, the ball, the, uh, the point, the, uh, the braille, as it were. On the back, you can see for the different scales what the settings on the machine are, and you need to follow those. So if we want to do an A test, we need a braille, we need 10 kilogram minor load, and 60 major. So let's see how we would do that. First, we would find the right braille. This is a 16th diameter ball. This is this is be used for the B test. This is a C braille, which can be used for the A test as well. You'll notice it's a tip, it's not a ball. So that's the right one to use. So we mount it in. You'll notice that there's a flat. You do not have to tighten it unless it, it slips out. Like that. Usually you can just slide it in and out. All good. The base of the machine depends upon your testing sample. This is for round samples. Let me take one here. Give me just two seconds to pull from the drawer. Perfect. So this is for doing circular samples. Here's for flat samples. And we'll do a nice flat sample. Here's a nice piece of steel that we could test. So I'll put that on. You'll notice my scale says HRC. Well, that's not the one I want to use. I want to use HRA. So I will scroll, and you can see I got B, D, E, F. I already passed A, but I'll show you all. And you'll see we have about 15 scales programmed in. So very, very convenient. This, this tester is incredibly versatile. And let me just scroll right through. HRA1. There we go. And you'll notice that this major load is blinking because the major load is supposed to be set to 60. The major load is set with this dial on the right. You'll see it's set at 100. That's wrong. So I'm going to set it to 60. So this machine is almost idiot-proof, as we say. How's the minor load set? That's this dial right here. If I, You'll notice I set it to the wrong setting, and now it blinks. So minor load, major load. Remember how the hardness tester works. The minor load is first applied to make sure there's good contact between the braille and the specimen, and then the major load's applied to take the hardness reading. So we're now good to go on this. The way this test is performed is we slowly, that's an important word, bring this sample up until it's in contact. You will see this bar across the top, the minor load come up. We do not ram this home. 
You can dial up fast till you get there, and then you go real slow, and gentle. You see, I just made contact. I watch this bar and listen for the beep when it makes full contact. Hands off, we are now testing. And you can see it read right a hardness of 59.8 HRA1, Rockwell Hardness Scale A. And that's a valid number, because the valid numbers are between 20 and 100 on the A scale. To release, go down and back the sample off. Now, when you first power on the machine, the braille needs to get set. So you should always take a piece of scrap metal here in the lab, do what I just did, and do it about two, three times. So we take a second test. And we do this until the numbers start agreeing. We get about the same number. You see, this one jumped up to 61. What's happening? This braille's getting set. So you need to make a couple of tests that don't do anything except test. Do not test in the same spot twice because you hardened the spot where you just tested. So don't keep hitting the same indentation point. Move the specimen around. Remember, this is a destructive test. The piece is getting indented. And now you can see it's settled down pretty well. And usually three, four pieces are all you need to do to start, and then you're ready to go and do your testing. So there, you've just done a flat specimen with a Rockwell tester.